I'm going to start uploading more videos of professional runners like Suguru Osaku, a 205 marathoner, forefoot running in action to give you a more realistic, clear eyed view of the kind of appropriate forefoot running mechanical sequences that hit on all cylinders that all adds up to a glide like stride with a bigger boost in forward momentum that sustains well a stride that's not forceful or heavy hitting with the ground that's not mechanically labor intensive and flat in terms of spring responsiveness i think osaku's forefoot running form has pretty good fundamentals to take note from to help us learn how to better coordinate our forefoot running mechanics to make it feel more complete, watching and learning how the pro runners use their feet, use their knees, use their overall leg swing mechanics, seeing how the gears work is a really good entry point for providing real checks and balances to help advance your forefoot running mechanics and help you undo mechanical habits that keep feeding injuries and strained running economy. So let's look at all the positive qualities of Osaku's forefoot running form. First and foremost, there are a few mechanical actions that may really stand out the most to you about his forefoot running form. Firstly, he's landing a little bit higher up on his forefoot. Secondly, his heel barely touches the ground. And lastly, his back kick is really high. Now, I really want to underscore that these three mechanical attributes are consistent with the mechanical changes that are prompted when you run really fast at blazing paces versus when you jog at a much slower pace. He's really motoring and I highly doubt that what we're seeing is his marathon goal race pace. Obviously he's doing speed work, which naturally sets in motion the leg swing and forefoot strike mechanics that you're seeing here. High back kick, landing higher up on the balls of the foot, heel coming down, but not fully down to the ground. In contrast, as you can see here, when he runs much slower or jogging, his back kick is much lower. He's landing a little lower on his forefoot as well, and his heel drops down more closely to the ground. That's because to reiterate back kick height and sometimes forefoot strike angle, that is landing higher versus lower on your forefoot are generally functions of running speed. So just be aware that when you're jogging, don't force an ultra high back kick. Don't land super high up on your toes because it's not mechanically and economically practical. There's no need for it unless you're doing forefoot running form drills of some sort. But when you are running closer to your top end speed, almost all out, these are generally the mechanical outputs that are expected that naturally get executed. Not all three because it's perfectly fine to let your heel drop fully down to the ground even land lower on your forefoot when you run fast, but definitely back kick height is something we consistently see that gets increased as running speed increases. So I just wanted to place special emphasis on how your leg swing and forefoot strike mechanics generally may change with running speed. Generally speaking, when it comes to running in a safer, potentially more economical position, much of the attention so far has been on the forefoot strike, but it's important that we also emphasize other mechanical elements such as the knee joint mechanics and how the knee plays its part in driving a forefoot strike that's well placed, more safely, more productively with the ground. I fundamentally believe that how you use your knee, bending it versus straightening it out, when your forefoot strikes the ground during running has a big influence on guiding the position of your forefoot strike. And that's really one aspect that doesn't get enough attention. Bending your knee when your forefoot strikes the ground really guides the direction of your forefoot strike to land closer to your body, slightly bending your knee joint like Osaku demonstrates here upon and at touchdown actually helps suck in the landing foot to land closer to your torso, which in the context of running is where your center of mass is. And the net effect of engaging your knee joint in this way, that is keeping 
both knees softly bent, especially at touchdown, acts as an excellent and reliable lever that perfectly prevents overstriding as well as the knee crushing and shin crushing collision forces tied to overstriding. So slightly bending the knee joint upon and at touchdown has a natural corrective effect on overstriding that phases out some of the impact force variables linked to some bone injuries. I think it's also important to stress that the best available evidence on runner's knee prevention is that the knees seem to be the biggest vulnerability when running with a knee joint that completely unbends at touchdown. In contrast, those who run with both knees slightly bent, especially at touchdown, are just more likely to have better outcomes in preventing runner's knee because slightly bending both knees adds more flexion to the knee joint, which seems to work best at easing mechanical burdens and strain on the knee. You'll also get a higher return on spring energy, which may work to the benefit of improving running economy such that when the knee is slightly bent at touchdown, more elastic strain energy may get loaded into the arch of the foot and the Achilles tendon. There may be more optimal elastic energy usage in the lower leg, which helps the foot pop off the ground with less muscular effort you can really turn the lower leg into an elastic power structure that gives you a richer reward economically just by slightly bending the knee at touchdown. This is how bending the knee at touchdown can be an effective partner in stabilizing a close to the body forefoot strike and in the enhancement of a more consistent forefoot strike landing that's more spring loaded and elicits a faster pop off response of the foot and most importantly by all estimates has a measurable positive influence on reducing impact. So these are just some of the mechanically functional imperatives that you can execute to help you become more skilled at forefoot running to help you use your forefoot strike and leg swing mechanics as efficiently as possible to help best organize your forefoot running mechanics in a way that has greater economic value and low impact loads. And that's really the takeaway from this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button to get more informed on the health and performance benefits of forefoot running as well as barefoot running. Thanks so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.